at the moment when you test this when you play it it should be working pretty well now we've got if you've hit the boss enough times go to the good ending if not nothing else happens but we've got the built-in timer when the timer runs out then you go to the bad ending okay so if I go to scene good ending I now have to uh, deal with that working properly good ending doesn't really have anything except the stop command and I've got you know my graphic that you win which actually uh, I want to change just a little bit I want some sparkles there we go so um, I want this scene to actually work nothing really happens here play button quit button uh, don't don't work because they're not symbols yet so let's um, let's set these things up here so I'm going to select my play button F8 to turn it into a symbol I will call this um, good end play so good end play uh, and then for the quit button good and quit I'll turn that one good and quit so we had already some play and quit buttons but on the bad ending they are their own independent thing they are their own independently named thing as symbols and they'll need instance names so uh, good and play, good and quit. Instance names then. We'll say uh, good and quit underscore btn. So now I'm giving them an instance name so that they do something. And then good end, good end play btn for the other symbol. So each button has, each graphic has been turned into a symbol. Each symbol has a unique name, and each symbol has a unique um, instance name, too. I'm going to copy and paste the code from the bad ending into the good ending, and then I have to change a few things. The bad ending works properly. There's a play again button, which takes me back to scene welcome. There's a quit button that quits the whole app. I want both of that functionality. Now I want it to apply to a different scene, to different instances. So I'll switch over to bad ending. And um, so all of that code there, we have some, we had two event listeners, we have two functions. So I'll copy those both. I don't need the stop because there's already a stop. Basically, copy all of your code from the bad ending, except stop. And I'll go over to good ending and paste it after the stop. So I copied that. I'll go back over to the good ending, paste it in. And then a few things need to change here. I'm not dealing with bad play BTN anymore or bad quit. And I'm no, lo no longer running functions bad play again function or bad quit function. Now I have these, these new instance names. Good and play I have a um, I have an object 
on the screen, good and play BTN. And another one, good and quit BTN. So now I can reference those objects on the screen. And I say after I click the good ending play again, I want to run a function. I cannot use the same one as before. It was on a different scene. It had you know different existence and so forth. So I'm going to change that to say fn good play again. And if here the logic of it is, as soon as I click that button, run this function. Well, this function now doesn't exist until I change it here. Let's define a function. So whatever we call this, I'll copy that and paste it here. Because I want the other things that it does. I want it to save a message they want to play again. I want to move them over back to welcome scene. Paste that in there. And now when I want to quit, well, this is function bad quit. Now change that to function good quit. Change that to function good quit. So we've we're defining a brand new function. It's a brand new scene with a brand new object. Logically, then, it's, it's different. It's unique for each thing. This is the thing about programming, um, that sometimes the, the bad thing is that it's very repetitive. You have to do things over and over. The good thing is that it's very repetitive. Once you figure out what you need to do over and over, well, you just do it. The logic of it should make sense. We've done, these, we've done this pair of things several times now, some sort of object that we're listening for some sort of thing, either a click or a tap, to then run a function. We invent the function. Yeah, we need to know how to spell function, and we need to know what to put in here. But then besides that, it's the same thing we've been doing over and over. So after that, I'll save it and debug it. And I'll test it so that I uh, defeat the boss. And then go to the good ending. And now I have a play and quit. I'll press play to play one more time to confirm play works. I'll defeat the boss again, and then this time I'll put, and this time I'll click quit and see if quit works.
So on this particular screen now, so on this particular screen now, we've got the um, the quit and the play, and uh, just going to confirm my code. So as long as it's this, as long as all of these things match up with the name of the instance, the name of the function, these things should work. So let me just confirm mine works, and then we'll see. Let's see here. I'm going to play, get some points. So I'll get a few points, then it'll go over to the boss. I'll play the boss to get enough. There we go. 10 points. I go to you win. Now when I play again, it goes back to scene welcome to play again. So I'll play again. Get back to the boss again and confirm 10 points right there. And this time I'll go to quit. And it exits the whole game. So it should do the replay. It should then do the quit. That code was the same as the bad ending, but just mixed, changed a couple of things, instance names and functions names. And if that works, that's good. Uh, we will do uh, music in just a moment because the game looks fun, but I want it to sound fun. So we'll do music in just a moment. Let's confirm it works at this point.
Okay, everyone, so again, there could be a lot of um, that we can polish this uh, in order to do a lot of things. Uh, so one more thing that I, that I want to do for the minimal aspect of it is some music. And I think we've got music that we can borrow in the network folder. Let me just confirm that. Uh, lucky rubber duck okay well we have some music that we can work with so what I'm gonna do is um, from the network folder you can copy that sound there if you already have one ready to go you can use it but this will just be faster don't waste time trying to find the sound right now um, go to the network folder and copy that uh, mp3 file into your project folder So you want to go to your current project folder and paste in that sound file. All right, if, um, if you could mute your laptop over there, perhaps. Next, what we'll do over here is we'll go to File, Import to Library. We're going to import this sound file into the library. So I'm going to import the sound into the library. Now, the, the difference here than what we've done before, we had uh, put a sound file into a layer, but we can also turn on and off sound through code. So this is going to need a little bit of setup because just like every everything on the screen has a sort of instance name, um, we can do sort of instant names for uh, things in the library. So we can get things out of the library as necessary. They don't have to be right on the screen. But in order to do that, we need to do a little bit of uh, sort of giving it an instance name. Uh, if you look at your library here, I have one sound file. There's a column called linkage, which is empty. Linkage is sort of like where you put the instance name of things. So when you find your sound file there, you want to right click properties <clears throat> and we've got uh, a tab here for action script action script linkage export for action script turn that on 
So we're saying, I want to use the sound through ActionScript. I want to turn it on or off through ActionScript. So make sure you turn that on, and all of this stuff turns on here. And we have something called class and base class. Uh, leave base class alone, but then class right here is something that we can write or change so we can type it easier. Uh, I'm just going to call this main underscore uh, mus for muse, music. I can have different bunches of music. I can have different music play at different places. It'll be the same sort of process where I import it into my library. I then right-click properties to turn on export, and then I give it this sort of instance name. It doesn't say anywhere instance name, but you can think about it that way. This class is sort of the instance name. You can click um, at the right side, update, and then OK at the bottom. You get a pop-up saying, you have not created this instance name before. We will automatically do it for you. So just click OK on that. And now in my library, I see that that mp3 file has a, has a linkage, instance name, class name. It's got like three different names, right? But now that has sort of an instance name where in the code, we can make this sound play. One of the important things is not only do we want to make it play, but I want it so that when my game is running and then I press home uh, to go check my email or answer a phone call or whatever, I don't want the music to keep playing. This is another instance where computers are dumb. Unless we tell it exactly what we want, if we don't program it, when I exit my app, it'll still be playing the music. So I'm trying to make a phone call and it's still playing music. So this step right here is we've got the linkage. Let's go back to the very first frame of the very first scene, welcome scene. I want music to start playing right away. So we'll go back to our actions panel of frame one, scene one, scene welcome. At the very top, of our code, um, I guess we'll put this, let's see, we'll put it before, we'll put it right after our comment about your, your credit and all of that. Um, we'll say import or activate sound code. we are going to activate the ability to write some JavaScript code so that it um, accesses the sound in the library. And that's by writing import space flash dot media dot sound with a capital S. So we're, we're activating the ability to write code related to sound. We need another one, import flash.media.soundchannel, capital S, capital C. One is the ability to, to, to work with sound. One is the ability to pause and play, raise the volume, etc. Put the music to the left or to the right channel. Import. The short answer is that you just need these. You need these lines at the beginning here so that we can actually work with sound through code. Because we saw that we can easily add the sound into the um, timeline. But now when I want to work with sound in code, I need to activate this at the beginning of my, of my project. Now also, uh, before we go further, these will play sound, but I don't want like uh, 20 people's sounds to be overlapping. So uh, let's lower the volume on our tablet all the way down to like this to like the second last sound, like not to mute, of course, but to like the second lowest one so I can hear something, but it's not so loud that we bother everyone.
So right here, the, the capitalization matters, of course. Just let me zoom in a little bit more. Make sure you spell that all properly. This is near the beginning. This is happening before stop, import space, etc. Okay, so these imports, these directives are saying we're going to work with sound. We'll scroll down a little bit later and we'll start to set up our code to start to play the sound. So, next line. Let's write these first and then we'll, uh, and then I'll explain. So, var to create a variable. this main music colon main music main muse equal to new main muse parentheses so we're creating a variable we're creating a, an object to store something. Previously, we created a variable to store the points. So it was var hit points, and then a colon number, which just says this variable will hold numbers. This variable is its purpose. It's going to hold the main music, that mp3 file, that linkage. So main muse is coming from there. Whatever I called my music in linkage, so what I'm saying here, this object can hold music, but specifically main music, and then a new instance of that MP3. So we're sort of like saying, okay, let's grab the MP3 from the library and put it into the variable in ActionScript. VAR main <coughs> music play colon sound channel equal to main music dot play parentheses zero and ten okay so we created a variable to store the mp3 file. Then we created a variable to um, store how many times we're going to play it. That's what this is saying here. We're saying play the sound inside of this variable. This variable is right here, main music. This variable holds the mp3 file. We're saying play the main music. Start at position zero in the music file, so start at the beginning, and then play it ten times. So this is going to be looping for ten times in my game. Um, that can be any number, of course. It can be one. I play the music one time. Maybe on the title screen it plays one time and then silence, so it's one. But I'm going to say let it play ten times. So that's what that line is doing. How many times to play the sound and from what what position? Zero, zero, zero milliseconds, the beginning of the file. If I wanted to jump over, start playing this sound one second from the beginning. Well, we put here 1,000. This keeps, it in, keeps track of it in milliseconds. There's 1,000 seconds in one second. So we can say exactly when do we start to play the sound. We're starting at one second past the beginning. The beginning is zero. If we wanted to start three and a half seconds from the beginning, 3,500. Three and a half. 3,000 is three seconds. 500 is half a second. Next line. VAR main music pause colon 
number equals zero. So whenever we use someone else's game or app, they had to program a bunch of things. One thing such as, again, when the game is running, and then I, I exit for a moment or I pause it to go to do something else, the music also pauses. Well, that's not just some way magically that that happens. It has to be programmed. So this is a variable that's going to keep track at, at what moment in milliseconds did you leave the app so that when we come back to the app, keep playing it, start playing from whatever that number was. It's not fully programmed. Let's say the music is playing and it's played for five seconds. So this number eventually, main music pause, is going to keep track of, oh, you stopped, you, you paused the game at 5,000 milliseconds. So when we return to the game, it'll say, play the music, 500 or 5,000, comma 10. So that's keeping track of how many times I mean, at what position of time we left. I can say here, variable to keep track of the mp3. Variable to start playing at the beginning 10 times. Variable to keep track of what moment of time in the music. So this, those are just some human readable notes that are explaining which of these lines are doing. This is the line that keeps track of the mp3 file in the library. This is the line that starts the music at the beginning, plays 10 times. This is the variable that we will use eventually to keep track when did we stop the music and when, and when will we start the music. Okay, I think at this point we can save it and debug it. Um, we can test if we've got this music set up. It's not fully polished just yet, but if I save it and play it, um, I should be able to hear it. And then once again, turn down your volume to the minimum. You don't have to have the volume all the way up to fully test it. You'll still be able to hear it as long as you have the volume up even a little bit. So let's try that out save it and debug it. This is one definitely where the simulator won't really do much. You have to run it on a real device. Okay, I think it's working. Sounds like it's working there too. Be there one moment. Yep. There we go. Let me check mine right here. Okay, so I'm hearing it. Turning it down. Okay, just because uh, I'm the instructor, I can do this. So if I have the volume up and then I exit, I'm still playing it, even if I go to some other app like Google Chrome. Okay, so let me turn that down. So I've confirmed that the music is playing, and it'll play 10 times, and eventually it'll end. But I've confirmed, I've started to play music via code. 
uh, yeah, just like I said, once you exit, it still plays. So um, we'll fix that. Obviously, we don't want it to keep playing while I've exited. Now, the way to really, really, even though I've exited right here, the only way to really get out of it, close the app from memory. So uh, stop the debugger, or if you go over to view all my apps and then you know shut it off like that, that's the other way to fully remove it. But obviously, we don't want the user to do that. We want uh, the user to not even notice that when you exit or return the app, it works. So we'll finish coding that one moment. But confirm that at least this part of it works, and then we'll write a little bit more code for it to turn on and off as necessary. So, making it work when you exit the app, again, when you use someone else's game, they have to figure out all of these details, and then it just works. When you make your own game, you have to figure out all of these details. And like I've said before about any programming language, you don't have to memorize all 200 of the codes that exist. You only need to know the ones that you need to do your to accomplish your task. And if you don't know it, you need to look it up or find a book or ask for help. So we have enough code written here to start to activate music, but then we need to have it stop when you leave the app. So continuing our code here, instead of it automatically just playing as soon as the app starts, we'll say here, next line, but don't start playing until we confirm the app loads. So we'll say, let's say sound mixer dot stop all. This command right here is one of the commands where we can stop sound. This is going to stop the sound, any sound that's playing. So I am setting it up on line 17, 18, and 19 to prepare to play the music. But I don't want the music to play right away, not until we've confirmed the app is loaded. And especially when we, when we uh, sleep the app. So we're saying, uh, yeah, we're setting ourselves up, but don't play it. Uh, just in case other music is playing, this will stop all the music to just focus on the main music. Okay, next line here. Event listener to detect when game is loaded to play music. This is what I noted up here. Don't start playing the music until we confirm the app loads. Okay, so we'll have an event listener. We had on the event of tapping, give me points. On the event of the timer runs out, do something. So now we will have um, on the event that the app has loaded into memory, play the music. Then in the event of us leaving the app, stop the music. So we'll have another event listener in a moment. The code for the event listener is a is a is an interesting one. We have native application capital N dot native application lowercase n but capital A dot add event listener parentheses. This code is similar to a different screen when we go to the good ending or the bad ending. We had quit the app, remember? We have, you know, get us out of the app back into the device. And it had the same sort of thing. It had native application dot native application listen for something. So we have. Um, that's the same starting point. But the what we're listening for, what we're waiting for, is going to be different in the parentheses. We have event.activate, comma, so 
So we're saying, let's listen for something to be happening in the actual like uh, guts of the device. And what that will be is that it actually activates. The app has activated. It has fully loaded into memory. Once we've confirmed it's loaded, we will say fn play music. Once we've confirmed that the app has loaded, let's run a function called fn play music. That looks familiar. We have some object dot add event listener waiting for something, comma, run a function. But the details are different. The object is the device. The type of event is the app is activated. And then the function right there. So next line, we have to define what does that it's getting cut off a little bit right there. But next line, we have to define what is the what is the what is the meaning of that function. So function parentheses colon void curly braces. Okay, so this is before, uh, as we've done before, that we've got uh, our definition of what this function means in the parentheses, and there's some sort of event happening. So in the parentheses, event colon event, capital E. So all of this was previously coming from, from this, when we had these other event listeners, whatever this was, we also then put it in here, event colon, whatever this previously said. That's why these are two, these are linked. We've got some object after some particular event, run a function. Here's the definition of the function, which works with the line we just wrote up here. Next line, or actually break those into multiple lines, right here. And fn play music. So previously up here we said, let's create a variable that holds the mp3 sound, then let's start to play it, then let's keep track of it. Okay, so we set ourselves up that we don't want it to play automatically, but we're gonna need um, some of this main, some of the same code up here, down here. We're going to say main music play equal to main music.play parentheses main music pause comma 10 so up over here I, I've said it that from the from the starting point from the zero width position, play that sound 10 times. But actually, we don't want it to play until the app has activated. So now we're saying, you're changing it a little. We're saying, uh, let's set ourselves up to play the music by playing the music, but starting from the pause point, which the first time will be zero, and play it 10 times. Once we have the second part of this code, when we exit the app, it'll keep track of, okay, you exited the app when we were at 1,099. So when the app starts again, this will be 1099. Start playing the music again from 1099 instead of from the beginning. So the next line, event listener to detect when the app is unloaded to stop the music. 
So when we tested this a moment ago, yeah, my music played, no problem. But when I exited the app, it kept playing because we never told it, let's stop playing when we exit the app, when we unload the app. That again is native application dot native application dot add event listener parentheses that's the same as above over here you can copy and paste pro tip so um, it's the same thing again native application native application add event listener over here we had event dot activate when the app loads up what do you think it might be when we exit the app? If activate is when we load the app, what do you think is the opposite of activate? Yes. Deactivate. Event.deactivate. When we load the app, we activate. When we unload the app, we deactivate. So up here, if when the app loads up, run a function called play music, what should happen when we deactivate the app? So if we activate the app, we should run play music. Well, if we deactivate the app, we should stop music. Yeah, play stop. F and stop music. So this again is about like the repetition of things. Again, I'm waiting for some sort of event to run a function. Some sort of event run a function. Well, up here, I have to define what it is. I play music, the music, stop music. There'll be one slightly different thing here, but it's the same sort of idea. Function F and stop music. Parentheses colon number that's different that's the only time we've ever done that differently whenever we set up our functions here we had colon void the return value just we just wrote void because that's the way it is but here we have return a number um, this is a little bit different in terms of the game is going to play I'm going to exit or deactivate the app. I want to pay attention to at what moment in time was the music playing. That moment in time is a number. So this function here is going to return or keep track of what was the number, what was the pause moment. When we first play the sound, it's zero. Well, as we play the sound and we get to three and a half seconds, it's 3,500. So there's a number that we need to pay attention to. And speaking of paying attention, make sure you write number there. If you ask for help and I go check you and you still wrote, wrote void there, even though I've said 10 times now, it's number, not void. It's the only time we write number, not void. I will be sad that you didn't listen because that should be number, not void. What we have here is an event of type event, just like above. And we'll break apart those curly braces to say end fn stop music. So this function over here was in charge of playing the music when the app activates. This function is in charge of stopping the music when the uh, app deactivates. And that happens by having main music pause equal to main music play.position over here we've said when the app activates
activates play the music. This variable is keeping track of the music is playing. It's keeping track of, for example, the position, the time at, at this particular moment. So we're saying um, make music pause, change it to whatever this reports back to us that the current position of music is stored in that variable. Then we can do sound mixer dot stop all and return main music pause. So the music is playing, it's going along, it's playing at, at a certain position. When I exit the app, this kicks in. It's trying to listen for, it's detecting for the moment we deactivate the app. This runs this function. This kicks in. So then it says, okay, let's check. What is the position of the music that is currently playing? Store it right here, 1099. Stop all the music <clears throat> playing and uh, return that value back to, so we can use it over here. When we restart the, when we restart the app, we were, we're gonna reactivate the app. This will kick in and say, let's play the music starting at whatever position. Well, this captured it as 1099. We returned it, so when we return back to the app, 1099, and then continue playing. So both of these together are, are the full code then to set it up that when we exit the app, the music doesn't keep following us and keep playing. If we didn't have that code, you saw that the music just kept playing and playing and playing, even if you went to another app. But now here with this code, if we wrote it properly, should pause your music when you exit. Go ahead and save it and run it and debug it and test that. See if your music plays when the app starts. Uh, try exiting the app for a moment. See if the music stops. Return back to the app, see if it continues. It is a lot of... Uh, a lot that you could mistype right here, yes. There is a lot of capitals here and there, and, and the big one here also is this is colon void, and uh, colon number instead of colon void as always. So that's another thing that could go wrong. This is something new here, return space, and then that variable. Let's see if that worked. Let me take a quick look if mine works. I'll get back to the code one moment. home to go to the home screen. If I then press to go back to the app, it keeps playing. And it keeps playing at the moment when I exit it. See, it went dun dun. And then when I go back, from that moment, it goes on. So I play the game, get some points. boss. I win. If I exit the game at the you win screen, okay, music should pause. If I return back to the game, continues from that point. Play again and then that starts. And I think we need one more little thing so that it replays the music, but let's confirm that that works right there so far. Uh, and debug. So that's that last code so far. Confirm that that works. That when you play the game, it plays the sound, and when you exit for a moment, it stops.
So uh, time flies when you're coding fun. So uh, it's already 3.52 here. So um, I'm going to say that if this works up to this point, um, this is enough for you to uh, work on your particular version of the project. Now, all of this that we've done together is to get it to, to work to the minimal level, which is I can tap things, I can get points, time runs out, I can stop it and play it. I've started to do a little bit with music. There's still more that could be done. We don't quite have time for it. Like I wanna uh, put it so that I tap a little bad guy and it makes a sound. Well, we don't have time to do that, but it's the same idea that we did for the main music in terms of I would put my sounds here, I would give it this linkage, and I would basically copy and paste the code that I already have, but into the function when I tap a creature. So I'm going to put a version of the code that does have that extra stuff on Canvas. If you want to do the things that we didn't quite get to, you can get it off of Canvas. Or you won't be faulted or deducted anything if you take the game up to this point and use this as your starting point for your own game. So this that you've worked with here you should take this, and obviously you don't want this boring gray background and these dumb buttons. You want your graphics, your items, this sound as well. You don't want this uh, rubber ducky one. It probably doesn't really fit with your game, uh, so you'll want to switch sounds. Um, as long as the other sound that you add uh, has this same linkage, it'll just work. So all you have to do is put in some other sound, take this linkage off here and put it to the other one and it should work. 
So I'm going to put my code up to where we ended here into the folder, and we don't really have any lab time until 4. And you're, you'll be able to work on this. This will be due Monday at midnight. So I am going to start a new lesson on Monday, but I do plan on giving some a little bit more lab time at the end of the day. And then you'll be able to um, work the final moments on Monday and turn it in on Monday. So you will have out of class time, um, you know, the rest of the weekend and so forth. You can go back to the videos and replay them and, um, and uh, see what you missed.